Hey everyone, welcome back to Desktop Inventions. It's been another big week in 3D printing with big price changes, major breakthroughs in materials, and even a 3D printed house made from garbage. Yep, you heard that right. Let's dive right in. Okay, so first up, if you've been eyeing a Bamboo Labs printer, heads up because prices are jumping. The X1 Carbon, the H2D have all had pretty significant price jumps in these last few weeks. Why the spike? Well, it's likely due to the upcoming tariff changes on the Chinese imports, which could add up to 148% extra cost. Bamboo is probably raising prices now to adjust for the tariffs and they're winding down inventory in the US as they have to bring in new printers into the market that will start distributing under these new higher tariff rates. So I've made this chart here. We can see pretty big increases from all of the H2D series and also the X1 Carbon series, all increasing several hundred dollars. And what's going on with Creality and Elegoo? Well, they're still holding steady for now, but don't be surprised if they fall once the post-tariff inventory runs out and they need to import new printers under this new tariff regime. So if you've been thinking about buying a Bamboo Labs printer, the ship has kind of sailed on that one. Otherwise, take this chance while you can to get your hands on a Creality, Elegoo, or other printers because those prices are probably gonna raise pretty soon. Okay, next up on the list here is a 3D printed foam breakthrough. This is one innovation that really hit me out of left field. I really don't think about foam much in the world of innovations, but researchers at the University of Texas at Dallas just created a formula for 3D printing foam. So what does this mean? Normally foam products like insulation, surfboards, running shoes are made of messy chemical reactions in molds that are irreversible and difficult to recycle. So why is this such a big deal? You can now design custom shaped foamy objects, not just blocky parts that are coming out of simple molds. So we can get lighter, stronger structures for aerospace, sports gear, and even construction purposes. So there's way more material control during the manufacturing process and there's better recyclability than standard polymer foams. And the exciting thing, maybe this isn't too far away from hobbyist 3D printing. So in the YouTube video, I saw they were pulling off these finished foam parts from an AnyCubic uh, normal looking resin printer. So that leads me to think maybe the printer isn't that special, it's just the material that they're working on developing. So that could be coming into the hobbyist space pretty soon. So if you haven't seen it already, I would expect to see more foam 3D printing materials at 3D printing conventions in the future, especially with 3D printed shoes taking off as much as they are now. Speaking of 3D printed shoe technology, that's a great segue into our next topic. Adidas had just announced a worldwide availability of their latest 3D printed Climacool shoe. Previously, Adidas launched the Climacool shoe last year in September, but at very limited quantities. But now it looks like the technology has gotten mature and they've expanded the manufacturing scale so that they can make a global launch for this technology. That's exactly what they're doing. On May 2nd, they plan to have a global launch for anybody that wants to buy this shoe. So according to Adidas, this new Climacool shoe features a full 3D printed lattice in the midsole for more airflow and bounce. And it also boasts improved comfort and durability over the previous versions. And just by looking at the photos here, this new shoe design is actually pretty slick and cool looking. So what about the price tag? No, it's not three or $400, but just $140. How does that sound? And again, these will be available for purchase starting on May 2nd. So make sure to mark that day on your calendar. And speaking of crazy tech, let's talk about 3D printed houses made from recycled material. Azure Printed Homes, a startup out of California, is 3D printing entire homes using recycled plastic waste. And not just some walls, the entire structure, interior, and exterior panels are printed from some shredded material. So this company has a big focus on smaller homes as well as modular and mobile homes that can be made entirely in their factory and easily transported to your location. Their homes are made from a ton of recycled plastic material just a 120 square foot home uses as much plastic as 100,000 plastic bottles. That's like drinking one Coke bottle every single day for 273 years. So if you're feeling guilty about your waste, maybe a 3D printed home can help offset your waste. So their website has a really nice design layout and they're good at taking you through the five step process from the design of your house all the way to the installation of your new home. This whole process can be done in less than 30 days they claim, which is incredible. So why does this matter? Well, it's tackling two problems at once. One, it's recycling plastic waste, 
and two, it's creating affordable homes faster. Hopefully they can get around the huge home permitting challenges as well. So this company is a bit different than Icon 3D, who we talked about last week that prints really large scale homes. So this Azure 3D is just focusing on smaller mobile homes and homes the size of small sheds that will fit in your backyard, at least for now anyways. Okay, that's it for the main news topics. Let's jump over and see the 3D printed prints of the week. Okay, first up for the Thingiverse print of the week. Uh, previously last week I had this V-Twin motor fidget, which uh, worked pretty well, but I didn't have a good solution for print in place. We had all these overhangs. So now I've updated the design to be uh, actually printed in place. Uh, mostly anyways. So what happens when it prints out, this other piston will be uh, laying down on the print bed. So all this can be printed with no supports. And once it's done printing, you go ahead and pop this guy in here. And then you've got a working uh, V-Twin fidget. Quite fun and satisfying to play with. And again, this is a remix of the original motor fidget that was made by Mars 3D. And you know, since I did the original V-Twin one, I had to do a V8 version. So this is a similar deal. Four of the pistons will be popped out of place um, and they'll be laying flat on the print bed once it comes out. So it'll come out of the print bed like this and then you'll pick it up and you'll just snap all four of these pistons into place. Then, uh, then it'll be working smoothly and you can use your uh, V8 fidget here. This thing is really fun to play with. You can flip it around like this. You can watch all of the crankshaft and connecting rods go to work. It is quite satisfying. So I'm gonna put both these files and the V4, V6 version all up on Thingiverse. All right, next up, this one is from Maker World, actually. Uh, it's this foldable comb. So it printed out just like this, uh, flat on the bed like this and so. And then the comb here will snap into place. There we go. And then once it's uh, snapped together, this can uh, fold up and unfold. The main reason I printed this out was to use on my cats. And as you'll see here, it works quite well and they love it. This was a great print by Jacob Dam from Maker World, and he actually spent a lot of time uh, refining the design, so it does print out really well and high quality. So if you've got some cats that love some uh, combing at home, I highly recommend this print as well. Okay, now it's time for the shorts. First up here is Printer Inception. Uh, looks like this guy got some free extrusion from work, and he wants to make his own giant 3D printer, 800 by 800 millimeters. So if you've got any experience with that, you can help out SkySkeleton97 on Reddit. Next up is a video I ran across of a really clever idea using 3D printed parts to mock up headers before welding uh, a custom set of headers to an exhaust collector. This guy is absolutely a master of his craft and he makes it look so easy to fabricate this custom set of headers here. And finally, Musecorn says he's in the wrong business when he sees a very simple set of 3D printed earrings for $30. I think we could all print these in about three minutes with the same or better quality. Wouldn't we all love a piece of that easy money? Okay, that's it for the 3D printing news this week. Which story impressed you the most? Foam that you can print, shoes that you can wear, or houses for your backyard? Let me know in the comments and keep on printing. We'll see you next time at Desktop Inventions. This new formula lets you 3D print fart farts.